Hey Construct2 fans, today I wanted to give you a little overview and example of using the mouse cursor setting and um, changing the graphics and things like that. Now what we actually need here are, we are using for each cursor, you need to be using a sprite object. So we have the cursor here and cursor hover. So we have uh, basically this will be more like the default one, so if we're just mousing around here, as you will see, it is just currently set to this. Now, however, when we go to this, the pointer finger cursor sprite appears. And then, of course, you can also define, you know, click events and things like that in these particular sprite objects that we have. Now, you also need the mouse object type, obviously, so we can actually interface with the mouse. That's kind of important. And then another consideration that we have to take in is that users will be expecting the mouse to click wherever the pointer finger ends at. And that's mostly just because it's a common desktop thing, obviously, for the mouse. Unless you have sort of the crosshairs like is in here, then people will, you know, wherever the wherever the focus of the sprite is, is where people will expect it to click. Obviously, you wouldn't expect a click in the crosshairs here to be on the edge somewhere or in a corner because that just doesn't make any sense logically. And so once we pick an origin, we're actually going to go back to the default cursor and specify that same origin. And that's so that all the checks are performed in the same exact areas, so we don't get some crazy stuff happening when you uh, it'll it'll just keep trying to set the cursor because it'll find that it's on a button, but then it'll set the cursor. Uh, it, it it causes all sorts of crazy madness. And then of course we want to make sure the uniform it's uniform width and height throughout all of these different cursors, just to keep it error free in the case that something goes wrong. And then once we go over to the event sheet here, I'm going to show you guys now. This is the hierarchy that we want of these events. We want to first see if the cursor is over any particular sprite that we would want it to change the cursor at. So in this case, we want, you know, obviously we want the hover to be over these two buttons. So what we do is we define these first. Is it over the button one? then set the cursor hover. If it's over button 2, then we set it to also to cursor hover. And if you had variants, you would be like cursor hover variant A, cursor hover variant B. You can actually just do this and make this an OR, and that will work just as well because we're going to be using the same cursor hover sprite. Now, at the very end, we always, always want the else statement to bring the cursor back to its default sprite. And this is more so for efficiency and just for cleaner events. That way we have everything contained within this little bit of code right here. And you can actually just throw this in a group somewhere and feel free to turn it on or off based on your needs for the project. And that is pretty much all you need to know for basics about the cursor object in order to be able to set the sprite and to set it to different kinds of sprites. And of course you also need these to be on the layout somewhere or in some layout so that way it can load it. You actually do need those there, otherwise it doesn't know what kind of data to pull. It treats it like a sort of a traditional sprite, except that it's basically pulling the image into the cursor rather than pulling the sprite itself into your cursor. So thank you guys very much for watching. I kind of doubt that you'll actually need the capex for this particular example, but if you guys really want it, you can always post something in the comment section, and I'll be I'll be fine with uploading it to Dropbox. But otherwise, I hope you guys learned something, and thank you very thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys later.